morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will, we're going to, we're preparing to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining us on this morning Facebook Live here at Mount Zion Baptist Church, 60 South Parkway East for Sunday School. We're here to study together, to learn together. We're even here to teach one another because everybody has been given insight and wisdom into the lesson that we can learn from each and every one of us. Before we get started, let's pray. Most gracious and loving God, God of all, God of love, God of wisdom, God of grace and mercy. We thank you for the lesson on this morning. We thank you, oh God, for the teachers. We thank you for the student teachers, oh God. And we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit that speaks to each and every one of us and bring all things to remembrance. We pray for those who are here, those who have a mind but are unable to be here, oh God, that may be out of town. We thank you now. Give us ears to hear and a heart and a mind to be open and receptive to the word on this morning. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. amen. Thank you all for joining us on this morning. I talked to one of the students. They told me they had read their lesson. I told them they were a good student. And this was just yesterday. And I thought that was wonderful, you know. So I know everybody has read it. I got into the lesson a little bit. And I start looking at all the components of it that I want to share on this morning. Now, we know that in our Sunday school book, it says God offers deliverance, but how does he do that? And in the text, I understood that God offers deliverance through comfort. There are so many areas of comfort throughout this text. Now, he's talking to Israel in the context of the lesson. However, even though it is aimed directly as the chosen people, the Israelites, some of the other 10 tribes, it does not directly speak to them because they're in captivity. However, this is the 65th prophecy. And some of these things that's in the text that Isaiah has written has not happened yet, but are going to happen. Now, we can say, okay, well, I can see that because we're just now reading it. So it's going to happen for us if it's not already happening right now, okay? Yeah, yeah. Because the word has been written for each and every one of us. And then in the lesson, he talks about Abraham and Sarah and their uh, dependents, their children and their children's children. Well, that's us too because we're grafted into that because of our faith in God. He's speaking to us as Abraham's children as well. There are some things I want to point out. First of all, let me ask you this question as we go through the lesson on this morning. Who needs comfort? We all do. I need it not every day, every minute of the day. I mean, I go through so much more emotionally and mentally than what actually happens physically that I'm going, oh God, help me. You know, needed some comfort here. Um, in the lesson <clears throat> on this morning, 51, if we start out, we'll see that if you look at verse 1, it begins with, listen to me. If you look at verse 4, it begins with, listen to me. If you look at verse 7, it begins with, listen to me. These are three prophecies, but these words are words of comfort. They're calls that God makes to the people. In verse 4, 5, and 6, it begins with awake. In verse 5, is it verse 5? No, I'm sorry because I stopped at verse 7. Number 9, it starts with awake. And then it goes from there, awake. And then it says awake. All right, but I want you to look at that. The different calls, they are alternated with comfort. Now, I know we're, the, verse, the, the this lesson is verses 1 through 8. So we're going to try to stick with that. But verse 1 again says, listen to me. You who follow out the righteousness, you who seek the Lord, that is us, is it not? Exactly. Zion is being restored in this verse. Verse 2 says, listen. This call is to Israel, but it is a comfort, eternal salvation that is to us as well. Verse 3 says, listen. It's a call to the righteous, comfort and eternal justice. God is speaking to Israel. God is speaking to us, telling us that, listen to me, this is what I got for you. 
okay? Verse 2, he said, look to Abraham your father. We said, well, he's not mine. Yes, it is. We just talked about being uh, children of Abraham through our faith in righteousness and seeking God. We just mentioned that. Also, um, my paper here. In the lesson on this morning, there are 10 things that belong to God. I want to share those with you, too. I'm looking into the context of the text right now. There are 10 things that belong to God, verses 1 through 4 in the text before us on this morning. Number one, my people, verses 4 through 6. Number two, my nation, verse 4. Number three, my judgment. The fourth one is my righteousness in verses 6 through 8. He talks about my salvation. Those are things that belong to God. My arms in verses 5 and 9. My words in verse 16. My hand, my fury, and my name are the ten things that belong to God. But check this out. Verse 6, there are three comparisons. Number one, the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. Number two, the earth shall grow old like a garment. Number three, men on earth shall die in like manner, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Okay? The whole creation in comparison with eternity and the incorruptibility of salvation and righteousness for God will grow old, it will vanish, and it will die. But Jesus Christ expressed the same idea when he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall by no means pass away. In this comfort, in these promises, in these uh, 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 calls to listen to me, everything that you see, everything that has been created, where we are now, what's going on, is going to pass away. But God's comfort, God's presence, God's salvation would never leave us. It would never change. In one of my devotions yesterday, I thought it was apropos that it somewhat um, spoke on this as well, and I wanted to share, share it with you on this morning. Psalms 103, 17 through 18 in the New Living Translation says, But the love of God remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. Listen to me. I'm going with the text this morning. I'm using the language. Listen to me. It goes on to say, are you anxious? It asks the questions about situations that you cannot control. Take your anxieties to God. That's where we find comfort. Are you troubled by changes that threaten to disrupt your life? Take your troubles to him. Listen, there's comfort in that. Does your corner of the world seem to be shaking beneath your feet? Seek protection from the one who cannot be moved. Does it not tell us to seek the Lord in Isaiah 51 and 1? And then it said, the same God who created the universe will protect you if you ask him to ask him and then serve him with willing hands and a trusting heart. That, we're talking to the righteous now, those who seek out the righteousness. Rest assured that the world may change moment by moment, but God's love, a love that is unfathomable and unchanging, endures forever. We do not love each other without changing each other. We do not observe the world around us without in some way changing it and being changed ourselves, but God's word does not change. It is applicable to every area of our life. Listen to me, ye that follow after righteousness and seek the Lord. Look unto the rock, and that's uh, a symbolism of being born. He talks about the rock in the pit of Abraham and Sarah. That's the offspring, per se. That, that refers to the birth of being born to them in which we are by faith. Look unto Abraham your father and Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. And that's what verse 2 says. Another thing that I want to hit on real quick, and that's the future blessings um, God too. I guess I can put that at the end. But there's one thing that he refers to here. Y'all can tell him, you know, I lost my page. Um, 
after the three oracles, the three predictions, the three messages, listen to me. He talks about, again, what I just read, how the moth will eat up everything, but God never changes. But he says in verse 8, but my righteousness will be forever. That's what we just talked about in my salvation from generation to generation. I'm reminded of Psalm 62. It says, my expectation is of God. My salvation is of God. And then I look back at how this repetition, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, and then awake, awake, awake. How many times do we have to say something before it sinks in? Repetition is good for us, is it not? That's right. And uh, it's called effective frequency. Things that are repeated over and over again. Going back to Psalm 62 also, I love what it says about the repetition and it deals with God. Psalm 62 is a wonderful psalm. I live in psalms every day. Anything I'm going through, anything I want to hear, anything I want to see, uh, the Lord speaks to me through psalms all the time. And that's where I kind of hang my hat daily. But Psalm 62 talks about repetition also. It says, God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Twice have I heard this. And yet it's still, we're speaking three times. Once I heard it, but twice, once God spoke it, but twice I heard it. So when you hear something, when I see something more than once, I pay attention. Right. I really do because God, with me, I don't know how it is with anybody else, three times. That's all it takes. God always confirmed me three times. So when I see it once, okay, I got it. But when I see it a second time, I'm really paying attention. Charlotte, uh, last year, when uh, the med called me to work as chaplaincy, I had met two other chaplains, black women, with HBCs. I'm thinking, you know, I can do that with an HBC. But then I did have a, a <laughs> somewhat of an HBC. Uh, it was uh, the trauma center, which, of course, received more black people, believe it or not, because of what we are living now. I saw more black youth die and come in with gunshot wounds, 40, you know, 40, been shot 40 times. Mm -hmm. You know he did after the first and second. Mm -hmm. Repetition in crimes like that is not what we're referring to here on this morning, but three times the chaplaincy aspect came into my life within two months. Three times. But I pay attention to it, okay? So if there is effectiveness and frequency, how does God word affects us when we hear it more and more and more. Sermons that are preached, it's amazing. And Albert, Reverend, Minister Reverend Evangelist Langston, he can attest to this, that as we preach and study the word, God speaks to us differently. Same word. Same. You can't handle it all at one time. But listen to me, what I'm telling you here, because it's going to come to pass. I'm giving you this now. So he gives us revelation in the word as we can handle it. If we could get it all at one time, why does why is it repeated over again? Why is this, the, the sermon from Psalm 62 preached three years in a row? Say something differently and the same thing because we need to hear it again. If we didn't, we would not hear it again. I've left church and turned it on. I don't do too much televangelists. I'm not a televangelist because we have a Facebook this morning. However, I can turn the radio on and I promise you, and it could be because of the lectionary, you know, because it's out there for preachers to teach on certain, sun, on certain Sundays. But you can hear some of the same sermons. Mm -hmm. Not preached the same way, mm -hmm. but the topic or the title or the text. Oh, I love alliteration. I didn't even practice a write down. That was the topic, <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, the title of the text is the same thing because there is repetition and we gain knowledge and we understand by that. So God offers deliverance in this text on this morning. God offers comfort in this text on this morning. It may not have happened, but it is to happen. God promises us that. So if it's in the word, that means it's for us as well. So if you're looking for the comfort, if you're seeking God's deliverance, then you need to seek for it in the word. He tells you to listen to me, and this is what I'm telling you is going to happen. In the midst of where you are, and in the midst of where you're going, and in the midst of what you're coming out of, like the Israelites in Judah, a lot of them, the ten of the tribes, were still in exile. But as they began to come out, 
these words apply to them as well. Verse 3 says, For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So what is this, what is this, what is this like Eden? What does that mean? Talk to me this morning, students. What does this mean, this, 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 this wilderness is going to make it like Eden? Was there no sin at first in Eden? Wasn't there peace in Eden? Wasn't there love in Eden? Wasn't there eternal life in Eden? Do we not have that in Jesus Christ? Peace, comfort, love, eternal life. He's going to make what was to be what is and what is to come because these are future promises for us in Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So he's going to make it like Eden. Is not heaven like Eden? Like Eden was supposed to be eternal life before sin crept in. Even though sin has crept into our life, we still have that hope. We still have that comfort. Listen to me. You're still going to get it. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And he is talking about the salvation. He's saving the people, the Israelites, his people. We're his people of Zion. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to give you comfort. Listen to me. Awake. Hear what I'm saying. And that's what studying the word does for us, too, as we continue to study it, as we continue to read it. Again, verse 4, it says, Listen to me, my people. Who are my people? You who follow out the righteousness, you who seek the Lord, if you want to jump back to verse 1. And give ear to me, O my nation, for law will proceed from me, and I will make my justice rest as a light of the people's. That's what verse 4 is saying. God promises a law and a judgment that would proceed from him and be a light for his people. We talked about the ten things that belong to God. The law of Moses and the other laws that God will see fit to add in the millennium will be the civil and religious code for natural men. However, Like Psalm 62 says, I've heard it once and I've heard it spoken twice, power belongs to God. So why now in the government are they acting like power belongs to them? When power belongs to God, does he not tell us in Isaiah also to pray for our government because the government is up on his shoulders? We may think we're in a time with the gun and the lack of gun control and even... Um, the overturn of the abortion laws. We have to see where God is in this. Are we praying based on what the word says? If we prayed some more, if we prayed collectively, if we prayed together, I don't know. You know, and then there are times, there are seasons for everything. But he says, where two or more gathered in my name, are we gathering to pray for the same thing? Or in his name. I'm sorry? I said, or in his name. You know, oh, wait a minute now. You didn't go there, did you? Yes. Did you all hear what he said? Or in his name. Are we praying in God's name through Jesus Christ? Let's, some people think you don't have to pray through Jesus Christ. But does not the word tell us that? So who are we praying to? What are we, everybody's praying maybe. Well, that's, that's too much of an inclusive statement. People are praying, but again, who are they praying to? And then what is their prayer? We're not on one accord. I'm not saying everybody, but the way things are going, yes, they're going to happen. You know, prophecy is being fulfilled, of course. However, what if we all got on one accord and listen to God and pray the way he's ordered things through the law for the civil judgments. He did not say it would rain down upon us, you know? So what would happen? We've gotten away from the word, not everybody, but some of us worldwide has gotten away from the word, but those of us who belong to him, those of us who are seeking righteousness, those of us who are seeking God, listen to me. 
Do we take the time when we're reading the word to listen because it is speaking to us? Okay, let's get into the effective frequency of it being repeated. Sometimes I go back and I, I read, well, I, I, I would say sometimes God has me to read that same Psalms for a week, for a month. I can't let it go. There's something there I'm supposed to be getting. And with my intimate connection with God, I hadn't gotten it. I get stuck there. It just stays in my head. Psalm 62. Psalm 62. And based on what I'm going through, listen to me. Awake and hear what I'm saying. I'm repeating it for you. There's power in repetition so that you can get it. And he's doing the same thing here with the Israelites. He's speaking and he's telling, look, this is what I'm going to do for you. Listen to me. Because it's going to happen if you believe, if you are of the seed of Abraham, if you have the faith, if you're seeking me, which means you're seeking out the righteousness because God is righteous. So even in the season, this is still being repeated because we got to get it. And I found myself, look, just because I'm called on me and I got it all. Oh, Jesus, that was a poem. But anyway, you have to continue to seek because you grow thereby. I, some things I said, I thought I had this. I ain't got it. Some things I thought I've grown from, I ain't got it. So God had to say, Bonnie, listen to me. Awake and read my word and hear my word. Okay, the same as he's doing with the people here. There are 10. I said there were 10. Well, no, there are 14 future blessings that God has for us. And this is Psalms 51, 1 through 11 or 11, 1 through 11. Number one is the land will be restored. Okay, verses 1 through 10. Verses 4. Law and judgment, we just talked about that. Did he not write that down for us? So we're not following the law, so anytime you're not following the law, then you're either committing sin, you're doing wrong, wrong thing happens, wrong things following. Okay. This, this may not be a good point to make, but I talked to my sister last night about the little boy that was shot in the face and died in Germantown. His father had him. The mother was on the way to pick him up. And on her way to pick him up, he gets shot and dies. The father mm. had been part of a shootout in this area. Mm -hmm. And folks sitting on the porch. You shooting at folk, trying to kill him. But your gun at the house laying out so your son accidentally picks it up. He's not following the law. Because the law, thou shalt not murder. But the law says love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? He's not even following the laws of gun protection. Putting it up so your child couldn't get it. It, it may not be a good example, but I thought about the fact how reciprocity one way and another, how sin continues to, you did wrong. So the same wrong that you did against other people is coming to your house by the weapon you chose to possess because you're not following any particular law, the law of the land or the law of God. Does it make sense? Oh, that yeah. bothered me. Yeah. <coughs> My question now is, did he find deliverance in this? Oh, is there deliverance from him? It's, look. I tend to ask this question. Do you ask this question? Whatever I'm going through, where is God in this? Lord, Even in death, where is God in this? Am I saved? Am I, if I die now, am I, do I receive this deliverance of salvation that he speaks about in here? And in Psalm 62, where my expectation is of God, that's my salvation. God is speaking salvation here, deliverance. We read it. Everything else will go away. But I don't change. What I'm giving you, what I'm offering you is forever. If you seek me, if you follow my laws. 
Thank you, Brother Wilson. This water is really good and cold. <laughs> I took it out the pulpit. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about the, the future blessings. I got caught up in the law and judgment. Righteousness and salvation, verse 8. Redemption. He, 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 he. The future blessings is to return to Zion. Where is our Zion now? Is it not heavenly? Where is our Eden now? Is it not heavenly or heaven wards? Oh, verse 6, talk about return with singing. We will come rejoicing, bringing in cheeks, but we're going to sing. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God has given us a new song. How can we sing a song in a strange land? Mm. But if we seek God, then what does that lead us? <coughs> Another future blessing. Oh, my God, everlasting joy. Freedom from sorrow and mourning. Where do we find that? There'll be no more crying. Come on, somebody. Comfort. God's words, those are future blessings. God's word, protection, becoming God's people as before. That's in God's word. How do we do that? We accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and say there's salvation again. Salvation. Vengeance on enemies. These are blessings that God offers us. And that's why I love Psalms 2. Whenever I'm going through stuff, I'm being attacked. I have to give it up. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So I see. It says, I will give you your desires upon your enemies. I try to make sure my desires is not for them to die. Mm -hmm. You know? But I want them off of me. So I have to pray about that because I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to carry that anger. I don't want to carry that animosity. That's why I have people like Word Law to call it and just clog up his ears with my whoa, 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 woo, woo, woo. It's me. <laughs> divine government. Where is that divine government? Those are future blessings that God offers us. In the text on this morning, but God offers deliverance. He offers comforts as well. The beginning of verse 1. The beginning of verse 4. The beginning of verse 7. Listen to me. That effective frequency God said, hear what I say. This is the comfort I have through you because you're sons, you're heirs of Abraham because of your faith. I'm offering salvation. I'm offering protection. I'm offering deliverance. I'm offering eternal life. It's all in the text. It is a future prophecy because these have not happened yet. They are unfulfilled right now in the reading, but they are fulfilled right now in the life. Woo! You know. And it was for the Israelites as well. But 10 of the tribes were in bondage. Oh my God, when they got out of the bunch of they were able to receive the word of God because he did deliver them. They did not stay in bondage, as with us. We do not stay in bondage in our mind, in our emotions, in our physicality. If we seek God and ask of him according to his will, that is deliverance. And even if we don't come out of it right then, we got to find some comfort in it because God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Did not the word say he'll be with us forever? Amen. He never changes. Amen. My time is up. I won't apologize. I get excited every time I get up here to teach, teach Sunday school. I try to stay on track this morning. I pray that we all got something out of the lesson, but before we close out, I would love to hear the voices of you all because we learn from one another. If you have anything you want to share, a word, a thought, even a song. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for joining us on this morning, even Facebook Live. We pray that you've learned from the lesson on this morning. If you're seeking comfort, if you're seeking deliverance, we all are joint heirs. We all are seeds of Abraham through faith. Pray and ask God. But when you do, take time. Stop before you get off your knees. Stop before you say amen and listen uh -huh. for the effective frequency of God's voice that says, listen to me, listen to me. Awake in your mind, awake in your heart, and listen. Because God does have the answer for you. Let us pray. 
Most gracious and loving God, thank you again for your word on this morning. We seek you for comfort, O oh God. Even as you have comforted us that we may comfort others. Thank you for the word. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for the future blessings, oh God. Help us now, God, in the effectiveness of frequency to listen to you. Pay attention as you repeat to us. Because you know sometimes we're hard of hearing, oh God. Some, oh God, uh, 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 willingly and just unwillingly, we hear you, oh God. Speak to us now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us on this morning. As you worship on today, listen to what the word is saying through song and even in the sermon and even through the devotion period. Thank you so much. <laughs>